Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be washed white as snow. That's Isaiah 118. It's a picture in Isaiah. The whole book of Isaiah is a prophecy about Jesus Christ, about becoming Messiah who would save the world, but not in the way that the religious elite of that day expected to be saved. They thought they were going to get a conquering hero, much like the people of today, but they got an eternal Savior who would show them, point them to way to forgiveness of sin so they could have a pathway to heaven because we are all broken. Sin was born in through Adam and we are all sinful as a result. Even our thoughts take us away from the perfection of God. That's why he gave us the blood of the Lamb. That grace that we're talking about is not one of the worldly definitions, but the biblical definition, the unmerited favor of God. Nothing we do will earn our way into heaven. It was all done on the cross. It's merely accepting that truth and then submitting to the perfect will of God because of what he did, knowing that his ways are above our ways. But the God of this world, Satan, is constantly trying to condition our minds against our creator who revealed himself through Jesus Christ. Now think about snow. What does ice do? It preserves. It keeps things from going bad. That's what God's grace does for us when we accept it and we move into that relationship with him. It keeps us from going bad. Now, the problem is we've been conditioned to think that a lot of things that aren't good for us, that are in fact bad, are not bad but are good. And Isaiah 520 talks about what are those who call evil good and good evil? What are those who substitute light for dark, dark for light, bitter for sweet, sweet for bitter? It's all there. And back to Isaiah 1, you go to verse 19, it says, If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. Now, it's not talking about God saying, you must obey me or I'm going to punish you. It's saying, no, here is the way to live in harmony to where all the good things can be provided for you. But if you go your own way, it's a path to self-destruction. But again, our minds are under constant attack because it's spiritual warfare 24-7 trying to recondition us to make us believe that these things in this world that promise us joy and happiness are fleeting. They're only temporary. Just because we can't see the immediate repercussions of disobeying God's law doesn't mean they're not destructive. The frog on the cool plate doesn't realize until it's too late that the water's boiling because he got comfortable there. That's what happens to us in this world as culture dictates what's right and what's wrong. God's ways have and always will be the same. The culture of the world is constantly changing. The world wants to manipulate using feelings to outweigh God's word and his truth. But how often have you done something in one moment because it felt good only to regret it the next day or the next week or the next year? Sometimes we don't always realize the ramifications of our actions in the moment until later, until it's too late. But we grow from all those things, and that's why we have God's grace to wash us white as snow. But we have to accept it. Again, the world wants us to reject it. It wants us to reject the free gift of salvation, the free gift of God's grace. It wants to turn God into a monster who wants to control us. No, he wants to give us freedom. That's why he gave us laws, some of which we don't understand because we're not aware of just how deep the rabbit hole of deception goes in this world. There are things that were socially acceptable 10 years ago that now will get you canceled. Now, some may say that's progress, and in some cases, yeah, that's true. But the problem is, the real issue is the force, the spirit behind those moral dictates. It's the same spirit that made things morally and socially acceptable and even cool 10 years ago, it's the same spirit that's now dictating that, no, that is wrong. Like, that's not acceptable now. When you realize it's the same spirit and it's a form of manipulation to bring us all into a collective hive mind, that you can realize that God's law is the only source of truth that we can lean on as a foundation for our, for everything. So just remember in Isaiah 43, 5, God tells us he blots out our transgressions and he remembers them no more. That was the foreshadowing of Jesus. 
that he would provide the perfect spotless lamb because there was always a sacrifice needed. Blood was needed to atone for the sins when you repented. But Jesus was the ultimate lamb, the perfect sacrifice. When you repent and accept Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, you are washed white as snow. You do not have to worry about your sins from yesterday. The God of this world, Satan, he wants you to remember those. He wants to fill you up with shame and confusion and so much. He wants to build a grudge against you and God so that you continue to rebel and do the things that have you in bondage. The world will tell you, no, you're not in bondage. You're just enjoying yourself. You're enjoying this life. You only live once. Like, follow your feelings. Follow your heart. No, we know that the heart is desperately wicked and very deceiving. It will lead us to places that keep us entrapped, ensnared. But we're to serve others. And when we serve others, we ultimately serve ourselves. But that's what God wants for us, to live a life of sacrifice. That doesn't mean it's going to be awful. There's so much joy in keeping yourself available and serving others. Either way, thank God for his endless grace for his ability to blot out our sins white as snow when we simply come to him and ask for forgiveness in repentance. And we give that forgiveness to others. That's what he wants for us. When we submit to his law and obey, all the good things of heaven are awaiting. But when we allow our feelings to dictate what we think is right and wrong and we go after what makes us happy in the moment, there's a cumulative effect and a snowball effect that affects everyone around us. That tells us we're not really concerned about them. We're only concerned about ourselves. But when we collectively love others as we love ourselves, we are living in harmony with God's will for us. That ultimately showed itself on the cross. So remember that when you see snow, we are washed white as snow. Purify me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Psalm 51.7. I pray this finds you well. God bless you. See you tomorrow.